So this is a, a model of a male genitalia. There's your bladder, your prostate, the penis, and the scrotum, okay? So when uh, we do vibrostimulation, we try to use a bell-shaped um, head attachment because that fits over the glands of the penis a bit better. Most men ejaculate when there's direct pressure against what's called the frenulum. It's actually where all the nerve endings come together. However, in vibrostimulation, there's often a signature spot. So when you practice this, you'll find that, you know, some men say, no, it's right here or it's right there. Mm -hmm. If you are able to hold your own vibrator, you just listen to your um, body signs, you know, of, of your breathing changing, of the abdomen tight. You start to listen and by placement, even if you can't feel it, by placement, you'll start to recognize that the spasm's starting to build up and then it might actually kind of turn kind of clonic. The yeah. testes actually come up, mm -hmm. the, the scrotum actually lifts up and the glands of the penis, even if you've lost your erection, the glands of the penis will swell. And those are premonitory signs that ejaculation is going to happen. You often see um, goosebumps on the legs too, just before ejaculation. And I'll also, um, if I'm doing this as a procedure, I'll also feel that the urethra underneath will start to contract. And that's very close to ejaculation. And that's when men say, oh, I think I might have to pee or something. But just, just persist through that. One of the things that men find is that because the vibration is so strong that they might lose their erection but just persist with it because erection doesn't mean ejaculation. You don't need an erection to ejaculate. So it oh, may okay. seem very strange, but just persist with it. Um, and some men, uh, they just place, say, a fruity care and they just leave it there and it'll actually trigger it. But I'm finding that the more that you learn sort of the skill of what works for you to help you ejaculate, the faster you'll ejaculate. And that might not sound very sexy, but the faster you ejaculate, the less chance your blood pressure is going to be bad. Oh, okay. So in other words, you'll get dysreflexic, but it'll be quicker and less symptomatic if you learn to ejaculate fast. So some men might have a very long sexual se session, like lots of foreplay for an hour or something, and when they finally ejaculate, their dysreflexia can be quite significant. Oh, so if you're going to have a longer foreplay, don't try to ejaculate until you're ready. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. And that will hopefully make the dysreflexia less. Okay, so I didn't realize it was possible to ejaculate with a flaccid penis. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is with the vibrostimulation, it can actually help patients ejaculate even without the erection. That's right. Okay. And that's true for people without spinal cord injury too. Oh, okay. You don't need an erection to ejaculate. So Dr. Elliot, I have a street level practice quite close to GF Strong and I'm expecting that I'll probably be adopting um, more spinal cord injury patients. I guess I'm just still not really sure what to tell them in terms of the safety of penile stimulation and practicing at home. It's a difficult uh, subject because men and women through medical school are not taught a lot about spinal cord medicine. Right. Yeah. Um, and even the physiatrists are not taught a lot about sexual medicine, mm -hmm. so it's hard to get the information. I don't want to um, say that you shouldn't encourage this sexual function, especially ejaculation, but I think it's our responsibility to be very clear about what the side effects could be. So with new patients out of rehab, trying a vibrator, they are at very high risk for dysreflexia if they have a level above T6. My advice to, for them would be not to say, oh, go home and have a vibrator, no problem. Mm -hmm. Just say, do some reading. There is more information online. There is a lot more being published on sexuality and fertility and sperm retrieval now than there was even five years ago. So physicians and nurses and OTs need to go and learn that uh, mm -hmm. to help you. But for the patient, um, err on the side of caution until you figure out your body. That's the key. Um, you know, I, again, as I've learned from my patients, they're not going to stop being sexual. They're not going to say, oh, I'll never do this uh, because my doctor said no. They're going to go ahead, but just take your time in learning it and try not to be too anxious or you could end up in a merge. And that's a turn off, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> right yeah. So we, we just try to prevent that. You're trying to do the safest thing.